Welcome back. You're still watching the spot. It's time for us to check out a spot of music today, and it is Banky W with Made for You. Baby, can't you see that I was made for you? I was made for you. That you were made for me. Baby, can't you see that I was made for you? Never thought I'd feel the way you made me. Banky was very proud of this, or is, not was, is very proud of this video. Because he, video. I think it's his concept, he, he directed. Um, it was produced, yeah. he, did a, he did everything. It was um, a very good video, I like one. it. Um, I think he likes to tell stories. Yes. With his videos, definitely. Yes. And yes. This was a very mushy story to tell. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the song is very romantic. romantic. Love, and love, it, love. She, she, the video was, the song or the video dropped like the Valentine weekend or something yeah. along those lines. So, of course, everything was just love based. Yeah. And, and it's. Even her earrings, like the, her earrings say love. Yeah. You know, hello over here and VE on the other side. Yeah, um, yeah it's, a, it's a cute, you know, I like the beginning, that cutesy little part, you know, the in case you haven't seen the video, she comes in and, you know, she sits down on the edge of the bed and she's like, oh, I want to talk to you. You know, we've been dating for two years or a year or something like that. And she's just trying to have a talk and he just dozes off or she thinks he dozes off. And then she goes to, you know, sleep and he raises his head and he kind of winks. Once he did it, I was like, oh, I already know what's coming. Like, I was like, ah, this is, uh, this is at the end. He's going to propose and all that kind of stuff. So, and uh, sorry, spoiler, he proposes. <laughs> In case you missed it. And the keys. And the keys, yes. That was quite I remember a, when she came. It was quite a topic on social media. Oh, it was? People like, ah, ah Banky has done it to you. What, 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 what? They don't have any keys to mind. I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when she came on about? the show. Were you on that episode? Yes. Yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah. And I was teasing her. I was like, why are you always kissing me? <laughs> so when I saw me, I was like, I did it. Um, hey. It's, a huh? it's not even like it was. What is that? It's not as if you can see like everything everywhere. It was a cute little kiss. But it's a cute video. Yeah, it's a lovely video. It's a cute Very video. Cute I cute think it, it, it did what he Those wanted it to do. You small children. <laughs> Well done, Director W. Mm -hmm. And Artist W. All right, guys, it's time for us to meet our guests for the day. And uh, she's a producer and a writer um, behind the scenes for quite a while now. And um, she's going to be here in front of the screen. Put your hands together for Nkiru Njoku. Hi, hi. What kind of, yeah. what kind of clap that is that? Hi. That is not good enough. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for you. coming. Thank Your you. shoes are so cute. Thank you, Mika. <laughs> and she has yes, small feet. I envy everybody with small feet. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. How long, long have you had your locks for? 13 years. Wow. You've never cut it? Oh, well, I, I cut regularly. That's why they're this short. Ah, this is really short, though, but okay. Trim. <laughs> why did you start? Uh, because I don't like permed hair. What about you don't well, like perming hair? I don't like, I, I, when I started my locks, it was because I, I wanted to stop perming my hair. Ah. Because it used to hurt my scalp. That was just really it. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for something that I could do that would just be there and I wouldn't have to tend to it all the time. And so locks fit the bill. But I heard that they are, at the start, they are very hard to maintain. Yeah, they are. But it depends on what you're looking for. I mean, if you're looking for fancy locks, where you have to go to the salon every time to, you know. Yeah, I wasn't looking for fancy so locks. So you did them yourself? Or? I started them myself. And then I got the help of some loctician dude who, loctician. who was fresh. So I taught him what to do and then he was doing it with me. And Great stuff. Cool, cool, cool. Thank well you. Done. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, can we know you? <laughs> <laughs> can we meet you? Yes. All right, my name it. is Nkiru Njoku. I'm a writer, I'm a producer, I'm a director as well oh. for television. That's it. Ah, that's it. Just television or? Generally? Are you trying to go into television? Yeah. yeah, but I will, I will transcend into film. I'm actually planning my own short film. Oh, I'm going nice. to be shooting it in a couple of weeks. Oh, nice. Do you find that you get enough credits as a writer in Nollywood? Or writers generally? Well, if we don't get credits on screen, we will sue. So we do yeah. get that <laughs> one. But um, I think in terms of the general landscape of Nollywood, yeah. it's, it's, it's flip-sided. If we get all the, if we get good credits, like oh, writers are doing such a great job, we we'll also have to get the knocks that come with it because right. not everything out there is great stuff, you know. So um, it's it's what it is really. Actually, switching up the question, I'm asking too many questions. Most people don't actually complain about the storylines because people say, "Oh, great story," 
So most times it's the director or the actor mm -hmm. who don't do justice. Who gets blamed. Well, yeah. I, would, I would disagree. True? I would disagree okay. because a lot of people do complain about storylines. I see that you know a lot okay. of the time where people directing is technical. Not everybody out there is technical. I mean, you will understand it because you're a television person, but people generally talk about, oh, it's a horrible story. That's not how it really happens. Twist and a oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, what it's not believable or whatever. Exactly. What do you think makes a good story for this side? I think a good story, you know, is all about heart. That's what it is, really. If it will tug at your feelings, it's a good story because truth is, there are no new stories. Yeah. Mm. There aren't any new mm. stories. Stories have a general template now, and if you look at all the stories that are being told all over the world, there's several templates that are the same thing. I mean, it's like, it's boy meet girl, um, oh. there's a hero storyline. Yeah, there's, good you know, guy beats the bad so guy. It's, it's the yeah. same thing. It yeah. depends on how you tell it and then how it um, translates into your own environment, like Nigeria. Now, there's some stories that you will tell here that will be completely off. Yes, you, know. you can't say that. Well, we met at Starbucks. And no. <laughs> exactly, because no. we don't have That's not how we don't have it. We don't have Starbucks. And then, you know, <laughs> Cafe Neo. You, have to, you, have to, you have to make sure that it fits the environment, yeah. really. Um, so it's just, as long as it talks about your heart strength, I'm, I'm good to go. That's, for me, a good story. Okay. Well, we're going to go on a quick break now. When we come back, we have our topic of the day. We'll see you guys in just a bit. Yeah, welcome back to the spot. It's time for us to get into our topic of the day, and uh, we've been joined by the lovely Inkiru Njoku, who is a writer. Um, she's also a director. Yeah, she's about to direct budding her first director. short. Pardon? It's a budding director. Not really. No, not true. budding exactly. <laughs> I was gonna say, but she's about to do your her My first film. her own first uh, short film. Um, so today's topic is something that's been a, quite a hot button topic in Nigeria recently. And it's gender equality or gender parity, um, mostly because we have we recently had a gender equality bill that was that didn't pass to the second reading in the House so in the Senate. Thrown out. Pardon? Basically thrown out. Yeah, it was basically oh. thrown out. Was tossed out, and that's had like a lot of you know a lot of reactions and things like that. But before we get to the bill itself and just Nigeria, since we're all around Africa, we're all around the world, let's just generally talk about gender equality or gender parity and each person's sort of thought or opinion on that. Um, I mean, it's just, if we're, I don't know, I think everybody has the definition of it. It's just basically have, when women and men have the same rights economically, politically, socioeconomically, education-wise, all sorts of things. So I'm for it. <laughs> Everybody I, should be for it. No, but people say that they're for it, and they're, but they're not, not really, really for it. Yeah, but then they should be for it. Yeah. I mean, equality is simple. It explains itself. Equal, the same. I mean, there's no long story to mm -hmm. it. You know. I mean, hearing you makes sense. Um, equality, like you said, is what should be paramount. We're all human, so there's no reason why it should even be a conversation or a debate anyway. But because of how the world is set up now, and developed countries, non-developed countries, I've always said that once religion comes into the mix in anything, even in America, we see till tomorrow where every single... I mean, the Democrats and Republicans are the way they are because of religion. Most yeah. of the Republican ideals are based on the fact that they are church-going and they stand by certain things. So that's what has made the argument here. Sadly, whatever it is, potent as it is, where people say, okay, well, in my culture, in my religion, we do this. Women are not supposed to do this and all of that. And people believe that's the way things should be. I don't even care about equality anymore. So it's a very hard battle because religion is tough. Religion mm. and culture. And mm -hmm. culture. That's mm -hmm. why we're even battling mm -hmm. two things here now where yeah. it's a very tough thing to break for yeah. a lot of people. Educated people have PhDs but still believe certain things. Tell you me like about it. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's hard. I think that's where we have... Where Okay, I think because yeah, I don't think there would be anybody that say no. I don't believe in equality. Yeah. But then there are comes people who say things like that. Actually, <laughs> and sadly, a lot of them are women. We, uh, really? Yeah, who say oh we're not yeah, equal to men. You know, mm. well, let us stop. We have a place. Let us take our place. Let us stop. You know, trying to be men. You're not trying to be men. You're just saying that we're the same thing. Yeah. You know, same rights afforded to you. Yes. I think yes. But what you just said, people have a, as easy as it is for us to understand what the definition of equality is, I think people don't, um, some people don't know what the definition is, if, if I'm making mm. sense. So as far as one person is concerned, equality means you're, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm married to a, a woman, she wants to 
be me and do everything that right. I do, right. which is competition for me, yeah. which is that you're trying to displace me and that I'm no longer valuable and necessary. So it's, I can understand how the difficulty in accepting, in, in accepting it because you don't, you don't get it in your the ego basic is the, form. Your ego is at play there. Now. See, so there I, I say I don't necessarily, re I don't, actually I'm saying this, I don't have patience for that just because we are in an era and in a time where information is not hard to find. Google it, homie. Just Google it. It doesn't, we, we say things, we say that things mean a certain thing, but we haven't looked into what it really means. Now, you can look and you can understand what it means and say, well, even though this is what it means, I don't agree with it. Fine. But don't say it means, that's not what it means. Things have a definition. And we know what this means. So yeah. don't say it doesn't mean. You can have your own that's point my of view. Yeah, you, if you, say, you say that's what it means. I know what it means. But mm -hmm. me, oh, I, just, I just think, you know, because when you start doing that, then I just feel you kind of look ignorant. And you yeah, make, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. But, um, but we have to appreciate something, though. There are a lot of people who don't have access to this um, information that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. The senators so, do. Well, go on. <laughs> no, those, yeah, another <laughs> conversation entirely. I can't. I mean, I'm trying not to even remember that episode. <sighs> but yeah, there are lots of people who don't have access to this kind of information, yeah. and because of how steeped they are in culture, mm. it's going to be hard, An really difficult, yeah. you know, to pull them out because it's about it's mindset again. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, I, I it's just all really, up here. yeah. I, I just kind of want to unpack that in a sense because this is a topic. The day after the bill was denied, the the bill was thrown out, excuse me. The day of and the day after, everybody had tweets up about it. Everybody had, you know, a blog post or whatever, or, you know, wrote a whole epistle about it. And I didn't do that just because I really wanted to sit, read everything and see what exactly what was, was so objectionable about? about this. Like, what is, is there something in it that caused so many nays to have it? And I just kept thinking about the word privilege, which is something that people bandy about as well. The idea of privilege, which is just basically when you, um, it, it, I think the definition is something is when you afford a certain, a, a certain group more advantage over another. another. And here in, I think in the majority of Africa, I would say male privilege is like the thing. It's and that thing. is what our culture is based on. And when you have a culture that is paternalistic or based basically on male privilege, which is that the overarching rule is that men are paramount over all, even common sense. Then you will have, when you're trying to develop issues like this, not only with even women, mostly with women, yes, but even with just modern day things. Mm, there yes. are other bills that have been thrown out that don't really necessarily have to do just with women, mm -hmm. but have to do with just evolving into modern times. But because you're on this pedestal of, well, what we say is right and this is what our culture is based on, then you use that as an excuse. And that is probably what concerns me most of all. I like how you've talked about male privilege because I have seen in recent times how some people, educated people, enlightened people, people that are fly, <laughs> you know, yes, have said things like, oh, um, the bill is great, but I disagree with some of it. However, you know, I have a mother, I have sisters. So, you know, it's the same thing about white privilege. You know how it's yeah. like I have black friends, so I can't be racist. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. I have, mother, I have um, you know, I have sisters, I have a girlfriend. Yeah. So I, I, I want women to, you know, mm. be, but I still don't agree with everything in the bill. And I'm like, yeah. what about this bill is really something the to issue. disagree with. Mm -hmm. Let's think about it. What are you afraid of? Yeah. If a woman gets her full rights, how does this affect you negatively? Yeah. In fact, people don't realize that with rights come responsibilities. Abilities. Responsibilities, yes. Exactly. You know, when you have rights, you are responsible. You have to be responsible. It's like when a man and a woman are living together, for instance, my view is that you should both pay rent. Yeah. Pay rent based on how much you both earn. I mean, if the man earns a million naira, for instance, per month, and the woman earns three hundred, calculate it. You know and how much you, that everybody does their ratio yeah. wise. You know, do and put, put your own part down. And I find that a lot of people don't realize that they can actually tap into that as men. I mean, you, you didn't come to this world to kill yourself. You know, when I see men <laughs> everything should not be on your head. And working and working, it's like everything they do is to feed the woman, to clothe her, to feed the kids. And then the woman is working and she's using her own money to buy a shoe. I find it very offensive. <laughs> you know, yeah, I do find it extremely wait, wait, offensive. Wait, wait. You said when the the woman is working, the man is working, the man's money is the family money, and right. the woman's money is her money for right. jewelry and her shirt. Okay. You know, I find it very <laughs> offensive because <laughs> the, what, you, you of cannot me. be looking for <laughs> equality when you're doing that, as far as I am concerned. Mm -hmm. It's like also, you're enjoying the we, benefits of right. inequality. Yeah. Right. 
that that is a great point. I was just gonna say that. Please just say um, that last sentence again. Enjoying you're enjoying the, the benefits, benefits of, of inequality. inequality. Yes, well, a, a lot of that. a lot of women have grown <laughs> accustomed to um, the consequences of male privilege. Like mm -hmm. it's like it's become the norm for some of them. So they don't even feel like some, anything should happen to change. I just feel like it's to the detriment. And it's it's sad because I remember. The, the, when you um, when you told us about the story of when your car got hit and the guy that that, that came out and apologized to the yeah. passenger who was male yeah. um, instead of the driver, and I realized how deep how the Nigerian culture is like hardwired. It doesn't even wired. occur. Like, there's it doesn't even people come don't up. even think it's wrong. It's like yes. it's normal. Yeah. <laughs> like if I hit your car, I can't talk to you. I have to talk to your husband. Yes. If you come to the mechanic, I, I can't discuss money with you. I, I must to talk to, to you. you know. Like it's, it kills me. Yeah, it's it so, completely it's kills so me. And this has happened to me so many times. Mm -hmm. Where I'd go out with my husband and I will be given absolutely no Regard acknowledgement because first of all, I'm not wearing a ring. And then secondly, I have my hair in dreads, you know, and probably don't look like the typical wife. wife. You know, and there was a time, you know, this is a personal story, but I would like to tell it because, you know, it was his birthday. I decided to do something. I took him to a hotel, paid for a suite and everything. And everybody was coming into the suite and they were greeting him and they were ignoring me. Mm -hmm. yeah. People who were coming to clean or serve, you know, they would ignore me. So one day I took care of one of them. I said, listen, this is completely offensive. I find this very horrible. I paid for this how, room. You know, and then I wasn't even <laughs> going that way. But how do you cut to see? But they said yeah. something that was very instructive. Two people said the same thing. They said times in the past when they have greeted the woman... Yeah. The men will be offended. Even when they pick up the phone, when they call your yes. room, they say, hello, sir. Hello, yeah. yeah, the men will be offended. Like, why are you greeting her? Why are you talking to her? Talk to me, you know? And I found out, mm. I found it really strange. But As I said, with culture, it's, with culture, it's very, very deep. We're going to go on a quick break now. Um, please do continue to join us online with your comments, and we'll see you right after this. Welcome back to The Spot. Uh, we've been talking about gender parity or gender equality with Nkiru Njoku. I think we're actually just getting our frustrations out because it is a frustrating situation. Yes, it is. Um, and we're all around the world, we're all around Africa. But um, just to recap very quickly, there was a bill that was uh, put forth in the National Assembly in the, in the Senate. By? By Senator Biodun Olujimi. Um, yeah. And she's, uh, she's the Ekiti State Senator. Ekiti, I don't know if it's south or north, so let me just, yeah. Ekiti state. Um, and yeah, so she put forth a gender bill, uh, a gender equality bill. And it was, it didn't even get to the second reading. They didn't even. And people came out to support it. Uh, I think uh, Senator uh, Ike Kweremadu said, oh, he thinks it's for, it's a good, you know, thing. And he came out for it. And then we had the likes of uh, Senator Amer Yerima and uh, Bwacha. I think that both came out yeah. and, and stated grounds as to why they were not in support of the bill. Senator Borsha's comments, I think, were the most, I don't know what words to use. All of cyberspace you know, A lot of people have brought in religion to, the, to yes. the talk. Oh, it's a certain, it's Muslims. Senator Borsha is Christian. Yes. It's Senator Emmanuel Borsha. And I was watching TV when they showed his bits, his contribution. And he said it with a smile. He's like, in quotes, that a woman can do whatever she likes will lead to what we call in house uh, Mijin Hajia. And I think that means a woman controlling her husband. That is an apostasy, Mr. President. And he got sort of chuckles across the Senate room when he said that. And it brought back to me what you guys are saying about not even understanding what is going yeah. on in the past. You also, you also wonder, did he actually read it yeah. before saying what he didn't. said? You know, maybe they did, but you know, they're interpreting it from their own prisms, exactly. how they've grown up, what exactly. they've been told. I mean, it's it's but English is because a lot of people were saying it's not, it. it's it's not little, easy. Why, why That's how our mother talked. People, when mm -hmm. the bill was first thrown out, people mm -hmm. were arguing that oh, it was thrown out because of the abortion, yes. the segment that dealt with yeah. the abortion, and yeah, which can I just rights. read that out because to me, it's I'll just read that out, yeah. So it says, the government shall protect the reproductive rights of women to terminate a pregnancy in cases of sexual assault, rape incest 
and where the continued pregnancy endangers the mental and physical health of the mother or the life like of the mother or the fetus. Now, I do not you know, know how you can find anything that. wrong with that. That's how it didn't say, everybody, go out. One abortion for you, one for you, one for you, one for exactly. everybody. With Pick abortion up abortions rights. on the streets. That's abortion what they're saying. anywhere in the world, it's always an issue. Mm -hmm. Because they will tell you that if you start with this, where do you not draw the line, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. The you line know, is drawn How do you know who's abuse. giving a proper argument that I was raped or whatever, you know? Which is not, I don't, like people said, why are you legislating about my body? Right. That's a whole other conversation. But my point is even, if the argument was that you were you threw this out because, because of the abortion, of the abortion segment, and you are now saying that the woman will become Mijin Haji or whatever, it means it wasn't the abortion. Yeah, it exactly. just means you just don't want her to be able to say, "Oh, I know my rights, and I know you can't do this." This is Christian me. talking, so it's not yes. even about the cult or the okay. religion there, where right. you know, there's poor and all of that. Yeah. So why would you uh, Christian fear. send it to? It's fear. Yeah. Yes, it's fear of the I think woman and what she can achieve. Because even with all the oppression, women when they want to rise, they rise. They will rise, regardless of you know. This makes you wonder how they treat their female co colleagues. Yeah. Colleagues. I mean, in the Senate is what I'm saying. Like, the how do they do? I think they are shouting down. I cannot imagine. Lots. I cannot Because the Senator Olujimi, the, the lady who, the lady Senator who, who introduced who sponsored the bill, the bill yeah. could, she was livid. <laughs> like, yeah. When, but, because the Senate, the Senate President asked for the A's and asked least, twice. He did it. He noticed. He was like, no, no, let's do Let's do it again. Because I think even he was surprised. And he did it again. And you could see her. She was like, are she you couldn't serious? Believe. So I wonder how yeah. they even interact. Yeah, I, think I, I mean, out of only seven out of, nine out of 109, out of 109, 109 are you women. See it. You yeah. see and then it. some of them were not present that day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. credit to at least uh, to the Senate president, even yes. the Senate. He said the bill will be reintroduced. Yes. With not proper awareness, because mm. yes. it's almost as if people didn't even know what was happening until it was shut out. People were like, yeah. "What?" Mm, exactly. So now he's going to introduce it, and everybody oh, would we're now still recovering. follow. Mm -hmm. We're still recovering from the high of International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. This was like barely a week after. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, <laughs> a, we, was a week after, six days after. Like, oh, they were very yeah. happy. Everybody's saying something nice about women online and everything, mm -hmm. and then this happens, boom! And that yeah. was so it was that. a real shock. Yeah. All right. Oh well. I think it's time for another break. Well, um, yeah. I think so. <laughs> we could take a break. Okay, yeah. so let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll still be talking a little bit, a little bit more about gender equality. Stay with us. Welcome back, guys. Um, right here on the spot, we're talking gender equality slash parity slash greatness. I don't know what that was, but <laughs> yeah, we'll have a human joke in the house. And um, Zainab wants to share some facts with us uh, yes. on the continent of Africa. So um, from the ADB Gender Inequality Index, uh, they measured uh, 52 countries according to economic, human development and law. Um, so sorry, human development and in law um, to just gauge um, statistics i guess so first point is that african women are more um economically active as farmers and entrepreneurs than counterparts worldwide um, i do all the work what did you say so we already do all the work yeah. <laughs> in 11 countries including rwanda women hold close to one third of seats in parliament wow. more than in europe that is a big yeah. wow rwanda yeah, yeah rwanda, rwanda most, yeah rwanda has yeah. it yeah has the most uh, the pay gap is extremely wide, despite women working 50% more than men. You know, even within our entertainment industry, even in I, I, I didn't actually <laughs> realize yeah. that there was a disparity between men and women. What, the work, in terms the workload? Of, uh, pay. 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 Oh, pay. pay. Oh, yeah. yeah. The first time I noticed it was when, um, <laughs> so I was supposed to be hosting an event with the guy, and um, they had said to me, I said something along the lines of, oh, because you know, you guys... Um, we we have to process the invoices differently because it's different payments and i was like what do you mean it's like yeah because you know we pay like the guys differently wow it's like different what is it different it's straight half. up yeah so i was just like I'm try and hide it. oh okay interesting yes. did you do less work no i didn't i did the exact same thing but um moving yeah. on <laughs> uh, in Rwanda, uh, Rwanda is the only c uh, country with over 50% female um, parliamentarians, as we said. And SA, SA has one of the highest gender parity rates for wage employment. So yeah, that's SA. Good thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. Um, the Namibian constitution uses gender neutral language throughout, um, which guarantees equality before the law. Yeah. It actually guarantees that you are equal before the so law. There's no Doesn't mean everyone she. practices, but there's no yeah. So it, you know that's, that's really cool. So um, so the ADB, the African Development Bank, 
did this, um, they started doing it in 2015. I'm sure they started the research in 2014, but it, the index, the first, the index came out 2015, I believe early 2015, I want to say. And they were, able to, they were able to measure about 52 countries. And they said a lot of their findings, they really wanted to focus on Africa because the UN also has the same index, but they wanted to just do Africa so we could see how we stack up against each other. Mm. And in the top 10 countries, no West African country was in there. Um, was SA there? SA was there. So the, the, the top five are, actually, SA is number one. Top five are South Africa, Rwanda, then Namibia, then Mauritius, and then Malawi. All Southern African except Rwanda. Yes. Let's just move. <laughs> Southern Africa, isn't it? Get up and go. Um, then um, I think Ghana is number 15. Wow. Sierra Leone is number 20. Nigeria is number 23. Mm. So Nigeria happened to register really low with um, legal and um, institutional discrimination, I suppose. Wow. Well, yeah, wait. Yeah, low with that. Side. And then, but it did better on the scale with human development and economic mm. opportunities. Okay. And the lowest, the last three on the list were Mali, Sudan, and Somalia. Mm. Those are the last three on the wow. list. So I just thought, well, I mean, looking at the different, how many, so many different, different how many, 52, 52 countries, countries yeah, 52, 52 countries. out of 54 okay, Nigeria. So I'm just I trying mean, to make sure that we're countries. not anywhere near the, the we're somewhere no, we're not, the yeah, well, we're somewhere in the middle, we're number 23. Um, and it just kind of got me thinking about the way these, I mean, because we were just, you mentioned, you wonder how they did it, um, how, for example, Rwanda, Rwanda did it, like, how do we then, how do we make it happen? And I feel like with Rwanda, they're a special case because of the genocide. I feel like after the genocide, when they had, uh, when Paul Kagame became president, they were very deliberate with in wanting to seem progressive. Okay. And so they made sure they did things that would um, also look, there's a mercenary aspect about it. So perception okay. was so Perception deeper. was, and they were like, even if there's, there's great benefits, because they've shown, there's studies that show that there's greater benefits when a woman is educated, when a woman is happy, when a woman is, when All she feels that. equal. But worldwide, the way people looked at Rwanda, for example, with the genocide and this, hey, yeah, poor Rwanda, they were like, oh, no, we're going to show you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they did it deliberately. You can't do something like this, by the way. You have to be deliberate. You, you know what? In the yeah. forefront of your consciousness. Yeah. So Otherwise, that's how they did it. It's, it's a conversation we've had a lot in this country as well about, you know, I mean, it happened a lot with our last government. Mm -hmm. where he promised 33 percent, 33.5 percent of his appointed positions. Yeah. 35 percent, actually. Uh, of, his appoint, of his ministers and appointments and all of mm. that will be women and he got 33.5 eventually mm -hmm. mm. which was the highest we've ever had, had. in this country i mean mm. it was the time we only have one female minister not too long ago yeah you know so it was a big deal at the time but with elective positions i've always wondered how does that work like with rwanda now it's a parliament how do you deliberately elect more than 50 percent women you know yeah. how do you pass that kind of a law will it work Mm -hmm. In Nigeria. In Nigeria. I mean, if we can't pass a gender barrier view, yeah. will politicians give up 50% of their positions for women? You know what I mean? So or even 30 or 20. But they're elective positions, like you've said. So yeah. it's not in the hands no, no, of so the so politicians, it's yeah. in the hands of the people. It's so how do you deliberately people. do that? I think, saying, they, like I think maybe because they have a lot more women involved in politics generally. So I can't speak for, I guess, any other country. I don't know how their politics yeah. work. But here, you can't even be, like, well. like even being in a political party as a woman it's here expensive, is expensive. And I think it's, um, it's, discriminatory, it's discriminatory. And I think the things that you probably have to deal with as a woman in a party, you just, you just choose not to. First and it's of, a dirty game. If you're married, Do you want to, if you're married, they want to know what state of, What's your state? What's your state, state of, of origin? origin thing came into you, uh, they, so the news so some time ago. Like, things. where's your husband from? Where are you from? Yeah, that, well, and then they say well, women like, can't so play the dirty games that polit you know that you have to play as a politician. They, there's rumors I don't know about whether or not you have to sleep with so many people and all that kind. Of, and so I think women don't really want to go into it because they don't want to. They don't want to be at the point where they have to find out. Mm -hmm. mm. And to be honest, if someone told me. Well, when you get in here, you know you have to sleep with seven people. I'm not even going to go in there and try exactly. and find out because how am I going to... Why? take one for the team. I'm not taking... Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm taking seven. seven for the team. You know what I'm <laughs> you know saying? What I'm saying. <laughs> it's so like, it's, so we already I'm look at it you. as a place where like, ah, if I do this, I have to do things against my own moral code or against my values. But again, the question arises, is it really about moral codes or about how, or about how you're viewed? Mm. I mean, growing up, when I never knew that I would be working on television, you know, or behind the scenes or whatever, I was even an actor at some point. I never knew it was going to okay. happen, yeah. you know. But as I grew up, I found out that my, my mom used to work in television, and 
she didn't have a great reputation amongst many people, especially wider family members. Mm. Because, because it was like, oh, because you're, you know, you, you're a producer, you're flying here, you're going here, then you yeah, must be doing something wrong. Yeah. Something immoral must be going yeah. on with you, you know. And I saw her fight that. Yeah. So by the time I got into TV, it was really easy peasy for me. I really didn't care what anybody was saying. I was just doing my thing. Mm. Still, I'm doing my thing. It does, nothing really matters. When you're talking, you're talking for yourself, you know. But mm -hmm. I'm just basically saying that, you know, a lot of the time, it's not just about the fact that women have these moral codes. It's also about the fact that they're worried that people are going to view them a certain way. Yeah. And that is a, a big problem in our family settings. settings here in Nigeria. That is true. There are a lot of things, uh, but I'm sure that we are doing our best to fight them. You guys, please let us know what you think on Twitter, Facebook. Send us an email. We'll be right back after this. Hello guys, welcome back to The Spot. It's almost time for us to leave. Um, we're talking about gender, or we, we have been talking about gender equality on the show today. Um, and I wanted to talk about what we think needs to happen next. Um, something I noticed online was that you, it, within all of the, the long essays that people wrote out, um, the, the reoccurring statement or comment was about what are you guys going to do now? You can all shout on social media as much as you want, but what are the next steps? Like, yeah. how do we help these men and women who make these decisions understand the value of what it is that we feel we need? So I, I for one, I, I don't really know what we can do. Um, but I'm looking at some sort of campaigning. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at some, the important thing for me is educating people. People. Because um, the day edu that. Educate a senator. Yeah, I mean, but people don't know the senators. They're the ones that need the make they People know. need to know. I'm saying, how do you do that? People need to first off know who their senators are. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are involved in politics on the presidential level when it's time to yeah. elect the president. But I we don't really know. He hasn't answered me yet. Yeah, so I think we should do a little bit more of that. Mm -hmm. Badger them, badger mm -hmm. them, badger them <laughs> until, you know, somebody listens or yeah. says something. It's a shot in the dark. But if you met a senator, let's assume you met a senator and you found out he or she mm -hmm. voted against this bill How and tells you vehemently, oh, my religion or my culture is against yeah. it, da, da, da. What's the first thing you say to him or her? First thing I'll say. Like, what, how do you break that? Well, First. if they're so vehement and you know you can't change their minds, then it's just all about basically campaigning against them for the next time. But You're not going to yeah. get my vote next time. And I'll tell every woman I know, whether I met with this man and he said he will never vote for equality. But he doesn't think you're equal. The women as well need work because how do you know that they believe in equality? Even when you break it down... Each one do them. one. You know, like each one do what you can. True. I, you so know what I'm saying? True. In that sense. Number of men who actually don't see a problem with the bill. Yes. And I think that's because they don't mm. know. Uh, yeah. People have been talking about the bill and they didn't read it. And I feel like read at least read the highlights so that you know what you're against. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And read it if you know if you're for it in a wider sense, great. But also read it just so that you're educated, so that when anybody says something, you can say, no, 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 that's not in it, but this is in it. Mm -hmm. So that you can also speak from a place of knowledge, and that helps. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I would also say, I saw a tweet, somebody who was here before, Editi F. Young, um, he said his company actually prioritizes hiring women over men, also because he's into tech. So, and that's a very underrepresented, uh, mm -hmm. women are very under, yeah. underrepresented yeah. In, in tech and IT and stuff like that. So he does that. And I think that, fine, laws are, paramount you do have to have legal rights but we can also do things take in our things, places of yeah. in our places of influence or power we can also take the step not to give women undue advantage yeah. but give them a sh an equal shot 50 mm -hmm. 50 that's all nobody says give every every time hire a woman mm -hmm. even if she's not right Good enough. but if you, you hire, hire a girl. pardon for every man you hire, hire, a woman. hire, hire a, woman a woman as well exactly and give them the same yeah. responsibilities if they failed then they failed because they weren't up to the task fine yeah, but I mean, not if you want to tip the skill like what this guy you've just um, referenced yeah has done, um, you Kagame, right? if you see like an industry where women are not very well represented then for every guy you hire you probably hire two girls who are able just to, yeah. just to kind of you know balance, balance things out eventually yeah yeah, sounds it's unfair, but it's, it really isn't. If you it's look horrifying. At it. The cultural barrier is very hard, and um, you find that the younger the generation, the more aware maybe sometimes. That's why you find that maybe on Twitter or on Facebook or social media, which is more dominated by maybe people under thirty mm -hmm. or early forties down, there's a lot more anger at the bill. Whereas you go to our parents, and they're like, mm, oh, you know, you know. so, and those are the people in the Senate. 
Yeah, exactly. And they're going to be there for a little while more. Yeah. You know. So, so if you want to change now. Yeah. Do we deal with that for much longer? Do we need to start fighting politics as against the bill itself? You know. Yeah. These are things we need to start looking. Hydra headed. headed. Attack it in so oh, many. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Hydra so many headed. Angles and there. Yeah. It's a very, it's a very tough fight. I, mean, I was listening to that senator talk. I don't think I was even that in on the bill until I saw him yeah. speak. You know, mm -hmm. because I, was, I mean, I've gone on social media, people were complaining, oh, they threw his gender bill out. I was like, mm, one of those things. Because I know, like I said, I heard it before happened, being thrown out. So I figured mm, this stupid senate. Until and I saw him talk, and he was smiling. And I was just like, he yeah, actually doesn't, insulting, he actually doesn't it? know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's just a lot of ignorance, or maybe just, I don't know, not mm. caring. Yeah. <laughs> That's Does they have daughters? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I, I saw, I saw something as, as well on, on Twitter as usual about you know letting people know that you know parents, families, educate your small children, your boys and your girls. Don't make them feel like one is better than the other. And yep. I think we all just have a responsibility to be honest. If you are informed, to make sure you inform somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, well, it is time for us to wrap up and go home. Unfortunately, we can't talk about this all day. But hopefully, you guys have enjoyed the conversation and have been keeping tabs on it and and being involved. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much to Inkiru for coming through. Thank you for We look forward to me. seeing your short film when it comes out. Yeah, thank right. you. Okay, see you guys later. Bye. One, two, three. One more.